In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to import word lists or clue databases into Crossword Compiler from external files. So to start with, let's start with word lists. So word lists are just a list of words, no clues. So I might have some plain text list of words as shown here on the left. So I've opened it in Notepad here, it's just a plain text file, one word per line. If you have it in some other program like Microsoft Word, you just need to save it as plain text. So it comes out as a TXT plain text file that you can open in Notepad. It should be one word to line. The words can contain spaces and capitalization, and that will be preserved when you import it into the program. In Crossword Compiler, word lists are also scored. So if you also have a scored list, you can import that. So the scores are not necessary. You can just use some default score and it'll be fine. But if you do have a scored word list, you can import them in this format on the right. So each line now has the word itself or the phrase, a semicolon, and then the score. And the score goes between 0 and 100. So let's say we want to import this word list into Crossword Compiler to make it a main word list. So I'm assuming it's a fairly large word list, so it's something I could use for filling grids, for example. If it was just a short theme list that I wanted to use for making a vocabulary puzzle, I don't need to convert it. I can just go to Freeform Vocabulary Puzzle, start a Freeform Vocabulary Puzzle, go to Use Words, and then use Load From File. So if I select my words, that would open the word list, and then I can build the puzzle. There's no need to import it separately. I can just open it directly. So here I'm talking about importing into a main word list for using grid filling. So there we need to go to the Words menu, to the Word List Manager. So this shows the current word list that we have installed. And to import a new one, you just need to go to the Convert menu at the top of this window and select Plain Text File. So you select the file where you saved your plain text words. You just select it, and that opens up a window. So you can rename the word list if you want to from the file name, my word list. If your word list was not scored, you can change the default score here. So 50 is in the middle. It's not good. It's not bad. It's fine. Nothing will be ignored by the filling program by default. You can also choose a character set. So this is normally set by default to something suitable for the word list. If you use Unicode list, that will import all characters which is also fine. If you have some word list that might contain, say, some Cyrillic words, and you want to only force it to accept West European words, you can use specific character set only West European. So if you imported a word list, maybe from the internet, that contained both standard English words and Cyrillic words, and you only wanted the English ones, you could choose the West European character set. If you used Unicode, it would just import them all, which may be what you want, but if you don't, then you can restrict the character set. There's also the option for how you want the indexing of the new word list to be done. So normally for most West European puzzles, uppercase, all accents equivalent is what you want. That just means that when the words are inserted into the grid, they're inserted into the grid uppercase and accents are ignored. So E and, e and acute, for example, both map to an uppercase E without any accents. If you're using a language where accents are important. You can use uppercase accents distinct, or if you're teaching, you might want to use case sensitive to keep the word list case sensitive when it goes into the grid. So you just create, create and that will make the list and tell you how many words it's added. So there's 8,475 in this case. So you can now view and use the word list as you would. If you want to add some more information here, you can edit this box here. So by default, it just tells you that it was converted from my words. If you want to, you can edit this box and click Change Info, and that will change the information on the word list. So if I now go to Words Fill Grid, for example, I've now got my word list as one of the options. And you can use it anywhere now in the program, just like any other word list. So that was importing a plain text list of words. What about importing a clue database? So a clue database is a collection of words with, and each word has a clue, and each word may have more than one clue. So here, for example, I've got a simple example where I've got a list of words on the left column, and in the second column, a list of clues. And you can see there are multiple clues for some words that repeat it. 
So to import a Clue database into Crossword Compiler, you want to use what's called CSV format. This is a very common standard format you can produce from any spreadsheet kind of like program. So here I'm using Excel uh, to use it to get the file that you can import into Crossword Compiler. You want to export it as a CSV file. So to do that, you could go to File, Export, Change File Type, and select in the other file types at the bottom here, CSV, comma, delimited. So if you select that format, double click, you can then save your file. So I'm going to call it American. I've already got the file, but I can replace it. That's fine. Once you've saved the file, you need to close it in Excel. Excel annoyingly locks the file and doesn't let you open it with any other program. If you want to import it into Crossword Compiler, we need to close it in Excel first. So if we close that, then we can convert it and open it in Crossword Compiler. So if I go to Clue, Database Manager, this is where you manage databases. You can view all the databases and you can import and export them. So here, for example, the American Clue database is something that's provided. But now I want to import a new one. So I go to the menu button at the top right here and use Open Convert. So I go to there and I select the file that I just saved, American.csv, and I click Open. And this now gives me a preview of the words and the clues in the file. So here I've got the word in the first one, the clue in the second one, and it looks fine. Things are lining up. Everything's where I expect it to be. Uh, the character set should be fine, and I can just import it, and it'll make that word, that clue database for me. So rather than doing that, I'll just show you what would happen if you were doing a slightly more complicated example. Let's say I had a spreadsheet which has the information I want, but it also has extra columns, for example. So here I've got a Excel spreadsheet of chemical elements. And say I was teaching chemistry and I want to make a puzzle where I have elements in the grid and I have their symbols as the clues and then the students are supposed to put in the elements from their symbol names. So to do that, you want to extract from the Excel spreadsheet the columns that you want to use. So that's basically B and C. Here we've got D, which is origin of name, which is some explanation. So that, that could be useful. You could use that as the explanation in Crossword Compiler as well with the clue if you wanted to, to explain why the particular element has that symbol. So we could export that one as well. So what we want to do is make a new spreadsheet containing just the things that we want to import. So I'm going to copy those columns, Control C. Let's make a new spreadsheet. and paste in those three columns. So now we have just the ones that we want for our Clue database. It's a nice clean file. And we can do what we did before. We can go to export and convert it to CSV. So if we go down to export, change file type, commerce delimited, double click. And we could save this as chemical elements. Save it. So again, we want to close the file before we can open it in Crossword Compiler. So let's close the file. We can also hide the original one. Now we can go back into the database manager in Crossword Compiler. And we can go to open convert and select this file that we just exported chemical elements and click open and we get the import window. So now the columns are not in the right order that we want. And we've got this annoying sys element origin at the top here. So we don't want that. That was just a title row. So you can click this box here. First row has column headers. That means it will ignore the first row as being headers. So I do that. I don't have that, which is good. Now I have hydrogen and the symbols and the explanations here but they've got the wrong things. This explanation is not the date. And I want to use the names of the elements as the word and the symbols as the clues. So I need to change the order 
in which things in the spreadsheet were associated with things I want to import. So here I want the clue to be the first column. So I want, I want to use the symbols as the clue. So I'm going to click the up arrow here to put the clue as being the first column. So now I've got clue. Word is now correct. And date, there's no date in this imported database. You can include a date if you have a, a spreadsheet with, for example, the dates of publications, you might want to import the date to keep track of when things were published and when that clue was last used. But here I can just click delete because I haven't got the date. The third column is now citation. So that's fine. I can use these explanations that I have as the citation or explanation for each clue. The spreadsheet was in the standard um, font, so West European should be absolutely fine. Again, there's an option for database indexing as for the word list, uppercase, all accents, equivalents. That would be what you'd want for basically all standard West European English puzzles. For Scandinavian puzzles, you might want to change that down to uppercase, accents, distinct. If you click OK, that will import the puzzle and open it for us. So we can now see that we have the words that we want, the clues, the symbols, and the citation being these explanations. So I can now use this in Crossword Compiler. If I had was doing a standard grid, I could use that in the clue editor to insert clues, or I could make a reform vocabulary puzzle now using use words with clues. So if I choose to that tab, I can now use database and select chemical elements, which is the one I just imported. And now I have the list of words and the clues. I can build the puzzle and I'm happy with it. Click accept. If you view the clues that you've got, you now have a complete puzzle with your imported clues, the symbols, and as the answer words, the names of the elements. So you can also export word lists and clue databases if you want to, if you want to manipulate things in other programs. Uh, quite often it's simpler to actually just write and manipulate things in Crossword Compiler rather than exporting and importing them. But if you need to, you can do that as well. And that's about it for importing uh, word lists and clue databases.